Nesta Makhno, inventor of the Tachanka, fighter for free Ukraine. Who exactly was he? In the past, misrepresented by the Soviet Union for his differing beliefs, and now bastardized as either a corrupt bandit or a nationalist warlord, we seek to uncover the truth behind this enigmatic man. So let's start where the seeds of revolution were planted, his childhood. Nesta Ivanovich Makhno was born on the 8th of November 1888 in the provincial town of Huliapoli. Located in what is now known as Zaporozhka Oblast, Ukraine, it was under the control of the Ekaterinoslav government in the Russian Empire. Nesta was born as the fifth son to former serfs, given freedom when the previous Tsar, Alexander II, abolished serfdom in 1861. The majority of the land in Nesta's town belonged to landlords, and many families, Maknos included, did not have enough land to survive. Due to this, Nesta's father was forced to work as a stable hand for his former owner, just for a chance for his family to eat. Nesta's father was hired as a coachman for a wealthy industrialist, but died before he was one year of age, leaving Nesta, his four siblings, and his mother alone to fend for themselves. The poorest in the region, known as Batrakis, which translates literally into farm workers, but aligns more with our modern-day depictions of the working homeless, would come from the nearby provinces to work for the big landlords during the harvest. Not wanting to subject her son to this life, Nesta's mother adopted him out to a pair of wealthy peasants. This didn't last long. Nesta wasn't happy and didn't like his new parents very much so his older brothers pressured their mother to allow him to return home. At the fine age of eight, Nesta began his education at a local school. He shortly felt truant and spent most of his time playing with many of his fellow urchins, skating and playing on frozen streams and lakes. He had a close call of death after one of these lakes gave way and he fell in, but he was luckily able to get help at his uncle's home. After his first year of studies, he went to work over the summer for a Mennonite peasant-owned estate as a bullock handler for a meager 25 kopecks a day. Nesta's under-manager regularly gave him lashings of a whip for even the smallest of mistakes. Nesta was not deterred and earned 20 rubles for his family that summer. Enough in those times to purchase roughly half a cow. All of his brothers were also working as farmhands. Even with all of their efforts combined, the family was still extremely poor. They had nothing. No land, no amenities, and not even a pig. After the summer, Nesta returned to his school. He devoted himself this year to his learning and picked up on maths and especially reading. Sadly, this would not last, as by the end of the year, at the age of 10, the family's economic situation had become so dire had to begin working the fields full time. Nesta began to feel resentment towards those around him, both young and old, who didn't have to go through the same struggles as him and his family. Described as a sort of rage, resentment, even hatred for the wealthy property owner. In time, Nesta was promoted from cattle to horses and began working as a stable boy. The landlord of the state's sons, the manager, and his under-manager took pleasure in beating the stable boys with regularity for every issue, no matter how minor. Nesta attempted to ignore this and disassociate himself from the sounds and sights of the fear and suffering. He had to accept it to help his family after all. He thought about the stories his mother used to tell him of the great Zaporov Cossacks and their fight against enemies from every side to protect and nurture freedom for their own. Nesta continued to work with that instant until at the age of 13, he watched a standard affair of her and could not take any more. The landlord's sons, the manager, and the assistant were insulting and beating the stable boy while the other stable hands stood and watched, half dead from fear at the wrath of their masters. Nesta ran in and alerted the head stable hand, a man he called Batko Ivan. Ivan burst in and attacked their masters, giving them back what they gave until they fled. He then took the workers to revolt, leading them to demand an explanation from the landlord. The landlord asked them to forgive his heirs, to continue working for him, and he would personally work to ensure their conditions would improve. Even with the landlord's word, Ivan left Nesta with some advice that would stay with him until he left the farm one year later. 
No one here should countenance the disgrace of being beaten. And as for you, little Nesta, if one of your masters should ever strike you, pick up the first pitchfork you lay hands on and let him have it. Over the next few years, the household shifted. Nesta started working at a foundry as an apprentice, and his three older brothers had gotten married and left the family home. That left just Nesta, his younger brother, and their mother. He soon quit his job at the foundry, and even sooner quit his replacement as a sales associate at a wine shop after only three short months. Instead, he tended to the crops on his mother's land, while working in his off time at a decorating firm to pay for a cart to transport their wheat. In 1904, one of Nesta's older brothers was conscripted to fight in the Russo-Japanese War. And soon after, the 1905 Russian Revolution took place. This inspired him to start reading political literature. At first, he was a social democrat and distributed their books and tracts with fervor. Until in 1906, he met a small anarchist group from Huliapoli, known as the Union of Poor Peasants. Nesta became sympathetic to their cause and the organiser, Voldemar Antoni, had a profound influence on him, and rid his mind of any submission to authority. The Union of Poor Peasants had to operate in secrecy. Tsarist repression led to military expeditions gunning down any troublemakers. Don Cossacks were stationed in Julia Poli as counter-revolutionaries, but spent most of their time just beating in the inhabitants of the town. But the anarchists still met at least once a week with their dozen or so members to debate the issues that moved them. This was what strengthened Nesta Makhno's resolve for revolution.